Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ahlam Al Amri. I'm from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control in Healthcare Facilities. And uh, today, inshallah, we have a brief uh, workshop about the infection control guidelines in surgical operating room. So, first of all, I'll give you a brief session about the main aspects um, that discussed in the guidelines or documented in the guidelines. And then I will open the channel between me and you guys to explore all your inquiries and we responded um, to all of them effectively and completely. So our objectives for today um, uh, workshop uh, by the end of this inshallah session, you will be able to determine the main purpose of the infection control guidelines in the operating room to identify the main infection prevention and control recommendation in regard to the OR layout and design to explore the IVC requirements in OR ventilation, dress code specification, cleaning and disinfection and dealing with airborne infection isolated cases. So as we all know that uh, as we all know that the, uh, the OR is considered one of the most high risk area. So the risk of infection there, uh, imposing or acquiring infection in the OR is really significant and high. So uh, based on that, um, because of the many influenced by various factors that relate to the patient itself, the operation or the procedure um, that um, taken uh, there, and also the surgeon and their uh, compliance to the IBC practices, and the facility where the surgery or the, um, the procedure taking place. All these factors creating a need for establishing an infection prevention and control program focusing on the main IBC measures in the mm. OR, the operating room. So integrating the infection control protocols in the operating theater is the key to decrease all these negative uh, consequences related to these factors and accordingly will reduce the risk or the rate of the surgical site infections. Uh, please, can you close the mic? Please, can you mute? So, the main IBC recommendations have. So, the main recommendations in OR is considered or consists of many aspects. We have to explore them. The first aspect is about the operating room design. So we have, as we all know, that because of the surgical asepsis or the aseptic technique or procedures that implemented in the OR, so we have to have a unique environment with a specific layout or design in the OR. So the surgery unit itself divided into three designated area, uh, unrestricted, semi-restricted, and restricted. And it, all these area defined by the physical activities that performed in each area. So the, the design itself provides a clear demarcation between the unrestricted, semi-restricted, and restricted. As we mentioned earlier, the OR is considered a unique environment. So we have to have a specific layout to implement the surgical assepsis effectively. In this uh, layout or design, uh, we, we have to consider the walls itself. So the walls should be painted with a seamless coating material that is bacteriostatic and can tolerate a washing with detergent and disinfectant without deterioration. As we all know, the walls and the cleaning and disinfection of the OR, uh, sometimes it's really harsh and hard cleaning and deep cleaning required in that area. So we need a specific walls painted with a seamless coating material that really withstand with deterioration of the surface bonding and smooth without cracks, seams, open joint and crevices or dividers. The floors also supposed to be slip resistant, solid and waterproof with minimum joints and the operating theater suite floor should be two to five millimeter thick and antistatic vinyl sheet. All the corners should be rounded because it will facilitate the easily cleaning and disinfection and to avoid harboring of dust and bacteria in this area and also should be no cracks or crevices at the seams or at the walls which may allow the best such as ants and cockroaches into these clean areas. So all this specification required in the walls and floors and also in the ceiling and which going to explain in the next slide. The ceiling itself should be smooth 
non-porous, scrubbable, and non-perforated, without any crevices or seams, and capable of withstanding harsh chemicals. I told you in the in the previous slides that the type of cleaning and disinfection in OR it really needs sometimes a deep cleaning and terminal cleaning, and all these um, areas must be considered to be really withstanding with all these uh, type of activities. So the ceiling should be easily cleanable and non-friable and monolithic. The doors also of the OR supposed to be in the especially in the theater should be sliding doors and no air current are generated. And also it's recommended to be um, automatic sensor and all fittings in the theater should be flush type and made of washable material, which can tolerate washing with detergent and disinfection. Also in the doors also and also in the accessories that required in theater. So the fittings here, that's mean the, the accessories needed. For example, the OR table, the, the stairs used, all these type of accessories need to be uh, made of material that easily clean and disinfected by using detergent. The type of the surgical scrub sink required in OR supposed to be have a specific uh, recommendation or specification. The sink should be allocated in the semi-restricted area near to the entry of each theater. And based on our ICA standard, at least one large scrubbing sink is available at the entry to each operating theater. A scrub uh, sink supposed to be a long deep sink that avoid any splashes of fluid and accommodate one or more staff scrubbing for sterile surgical procedure at one time. Just already all the layout and design specification in OR. Now we are going to the operating or room zones. So the zones um, in the uh, OR are supposed to be divided to unrestricted, semi-restricted, and restricted. And the color coded here, we are usually see it in the, the healthcare facility. So unrestricted, for example, in the offices, in the corridors, outside the, the area or away from the area where the surgical uh, procedure is uh, occurred or um, implemented. In the semi-restricted area, it's the corridor where the scrub sink available or where the station available for the healthcare workers or the healthcare personnel of OR and restricted it's the theater itself. So all these zones supposed to be clear demarcation between them and clear personal um, accessibility to all these areas. Why we have all these traffic zones? Because the traffic control is really significant. As we all know, in the infection control practice, the aseptic technique needs uh, specific principles, and one of them is the environmental or traffic control. And, and we all know that the OR, all the procedures um, conducted there, it's about all surgical or a surgical asepsis procedure. So we need a control of traffic there. So it must be controlled to maintain a separation of a clean from dirty area, to segregate a clean and sterile supply from contaminated ones, and to ensure that only authorized person, personnel with appropriate attire enter the operating room. So as we mentioned in the, the uh, zones of the operating or OR, that we have a specific control or authorized personnel in each of these zones. First of all, the unrestricted area. So each area include a central control point for designated personnel to monitor the entrance of patient, personnel and materials into the semi-restricted. So the unrestricted, it's the pathway to the semi-restricted area. Staff changing areas, staff lounge, offices, waiting rooms or area, dirty utility rooms, pre and post operative patient care area, all allocated in the unrestricted area. What type of the dress code required for the healthcare workers or any personnel working or uh, crossing through the unrestricted area? Street clothes are permitted. So you need to wear here a surgical scrub. But we doesn't mean here street clothes that any clothes. No, we are mentioning that according to the policy of the dress code of the hospital. In the semi-restricted area, it's supposed to be yellow, yellow color or coded. I put it here orange because to, to protect your eyes from the, the strong um, uh, vibe of the yellow color. It's a peripheral area that supports surgical surfaces, and this area can include storage for equipment, clean and sterile supplies, work areas for processing instrument and sterile processing facilities. And also put here three lines. And we have the hand scrub station or the surgical scrub sink and corridor to the OR theater. 
And here the healthcare workers or personnel crossing that area need to have or should wear a surgical attire and cover both head and facial hair. So the semi-restricted area type of this code required mostly common with the restricted area. So the restricted area, the last traffic zone is the color coded one, designated space contained within a semi-restricted area and accessible only through a semi-restricted area. So the, we cannot access the restricted area through the unrestricted. No, it must be accessed only through the uh, semi-restricted area. The restricted area includes an operating theater and other room in which surgical operation or other invasive procedure are performed. So all the invasive procedure, all the surgical procedure that need a septic technique occurred only in the restricted area, which is the OR theater. So personnel in this area should wear a surgical attire and cover both head and facial hair, plus they need to wear a mask because we have open sterile supplies there or person who are scrubbing their ha hand or completed a surgical scrub hand. So they need to wear a mask plus all the uh, surgical attire. We finished already from the design. We finished from the traffic control aspect. Now we are going through the operating theater ventilation. As we all know that one principle of the aseptic technique or surgical asepsis is controlling the ventilation in the area. So what's the pressure required? with a value at least plus to um, 2.5 and air change should be as minimum or equal to 20 air change per hour and it's supposed to be 20 percent of the air is fresh air the temperature also must be controlled and range from 21 to 24 degrees centigrade and the relative humidity ranges from 20 to 60 percent the ventilation system of OR should be continuously operated 24 7 we cannot shut down the ventilation at any occasion unless if we have a system maintenance. At that time, we have to stop performing any surgical procedure inside the area. And another aspect, significant aspect, that the surgical attire, as we mentioned earlier in the, the zones or the traffic zones, so the surgical attire that should be worn in the semi-restricted and restricted area, as we mentioned earlier, the same, so include the head cover, mask, scrub suit, warm up jackets and shoes. The surgical team members are responsible for preventing SSI by complying and properly wearing the appropriate attire in their area. So one factor that lead to the increased rate of surgical site infection is inappropriate surgical attire in the area. We have to ensure that the attire worn in each area of the procedure or surgical suite conform to the recommended attire for that area. For example, the semi-restricted zone requires surgical scrub or surgical attire and a hat too. So where a facility laundered, we don't want the home laundered. Why? Because we have a specific uh, process required in the laundry of the um, our uh, suit required in the um, wearing in the surgical um, uh, area. So clean attire in the semi-restricted and restricted area required to be facility laundered and not home laundered. And we wear a long sleeved, fully buttoned, snapped close jacket or long sleeve scrub shirt in the restricted area. Why? We I received many questions regarding the guidelines. Why we have to wear a long sleeved and fully buttoned jacket while we are wearing a surgical gown during the procedure. Actually, the surgical gown or sterile surgical gown or sterile gloves worn only by scrubbing nurse or scrubbing uh, physician or surgeon. But the other healthcare workers who are not in direct contact with the sterile supplies need to wear a long sleeve. Why? Because we need to protect the whole theater itself and the OR suite or OR um, uh, operation room itself from any shedding of skin or shedding of the hair. So to maintain the, the sterility itself of the area itself. So to reduce the risk of the surgical site infection accordingly. The fingernails itself that are long and extended beyond the fingertips cannot, can puncture the gloves. So as infection control practitioners or infection control um, preventionists, we have to go to the area and check the compliance to the infection control recommendations or practice or policy in the OR. They are not permitted to any healthcare workers 
and particularly and high risk the OR itself because the fingernails it's all always harboring the microorganism and lead to increase the surgical site infection from the exposure. So the skin floor itself and that in the subangual has been identified as harboring the majority of microorganism as compared to the skin of hand and forearm. So as uh, our role as infection control practitioners, we have to monitor the staff compliance to all recommendation that documented in the guidelines and in the policy itself. All the design, all the layout, all the traffic, all the aspect that discussed in the or uh, documented or reported in the guidelines, it's based on the surgical asepsis because we have a specific principles and we know that the OR only conducting surgical sterile procedures. So uh, the principles of the surgical asepsis that we have to control the environment and all related factors. Sterile scrub personnel are gowned and gloved. Sterile personnel operate within a sterile field must touch only sterile item and the sterile personnel touch only sterile items or areas and unsterile personnel touch only unsterile items or area. We cannot compromise this role. Sterile drapes are used to create a sterile field and we all know that we have a specific principles re related to the aseptic technique or surgical asepsis. One of them is the, uh, the using a protective layers, which is a drapes, a BBE and also protecting the environment. All items used in the sterile field must be sterile and we have to highlight this. And another aspect that discussed or re reported or documented and significant in implementing the infection prevention and control practices uh, or recommendations in OR environmental cleaning and disinfection. And that's why we have a specific recommendation for the type of walls, of ceilings, of accessories, of the floors, everything. Why? Because we have a specific cleaning and disinfection in that area different than other area. So the OR should be cleaned safely and effectively by using MOH approved products. Cleaning happens at various items. Every day before surgery begins between patients or between cases, after the last operation of the day, and known as a thermal cleaning and deep cleaning are carried out once a week or sometimes once a month, but usually it's once a week. So all area must be cleaned, unrestricted, semi-restricted and restricted, but how we are conducting that cleaning or disinfection, we have to start from the theater itself before moving to the scrub area, anesthetic and recovery rooms, and the toilet should be cleaned last. And the last aspect or approach that discussed in the guidelines is dealing with the patient with suspected or confirmed airborne transmission infections. And we are facing that um, uh, uh, recently during the pandemic of COVID-19 that we have an emergency cases of COVID-19 need to uh, put it on the list and we cannot manage it any effectively based on our policy. So always we have to have a specific policy or protocols to dealing with this type of cases. So it should be performed at the end of the schedule or at the time with minimal number of surgeries and patient in the department. And if clinically it possible, the patient should be intubated in a negative pressure room, then transferred to the theater or OR. And in many facilities, they are using the portable HIPAA filter, but they have to switch off the HIPAA filter during the surgery or procedure. We need a minimum number of OR staff to attend the surgery. And I, as I mentioned or uh, um, reported that in the guidelines, the portable filter should be used during the intubation and extubation and should be off during the surgery. And the bacterial filter must be used by the anesthesia te team when they are intubating the patient using the circuit of ventilator or the um, airway uh, system, ventilation system used for that procedure. And also the team must wear the approved respirator all the time based on their license. And if not available, they can use PAPA, as we all know. So the respirator with exhalation valve prohibited all the time because it compromised the sterile field itself and contaminate the environment. Because as we all know, the valve is transmission of the microorganism or the droplet of nuclei of the healthcare workers who are wearing the respirator. 
So if possible, post-operative recovery should be conducted inside the theater with the portable hepatitis instead of placing the patient in the recovery area uh, and uh, uh, he, he will um, uh, cross through the other patients and contaminate and maybe it will be a risk of transmission of infection to the other patients. So it's preferred to keep the patient inside their theater or in the negative pressure room. And never, ever, never, ever, I'm reminding you guys, never ever changing the parameters of ventilation, ventilation inside the say, theater. Sometimes you are hearing the infection control in some hospitals, they are changing the parameters of the OR uh, theater or suite, and this is really not allowed and prohibited because we can, it, it will compromise the infection and will compromise our patients and our healthcare workers. So we have to keep the patient in with portable filter. Finally, I finish, um, I give you a brief session about the workshop or the main aspect or approaches that already documented or reported.